Good afternoon folks. So what we're going to be doing in this video today is we're going to be doing some questions that we have previously done in another video whereby we're going to be looking at outcrop points, learning how to do the dip, the strike and the thickness of a stratum of ore and then in some points we're actually going to be drawing the actual outcrop of where all that ore comes to the surface. Okay. So I'll go through this video a little bit quicker, uh, I suppose with a little bit less explanation because we have done a lot of this stuff already, but when I get to the outcrop points at the end, I'll go through that in more detail. So three questions in this video, uh, question one, question two, and question three, I'll go through each of them individually. So I'll flash to this one here first. So for question number one, it states, the map shows ground contours at five meter vertical intervals. A, B, and C are outcrop points on the head wall of a stratum of ore, okay, so the top surface of that ore. And then it says part A, determine the strike and dip of the stratum, and then part B, draw the outcrop of the ore. Okay, so we have done this previously, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker on this part. So what we want to do is, we're going to join the points in our plan view here of A, B, and C. Okay, and what that is, is it's actually helping us create a plane surface from A to B to C a triangular plane surface which are three outcrop points on the head wall of a stratum of ore where A is at 30, B is at 35 and C is at 50 that is my plan view of it because I'm looking down here on the plan view where I have the plan view I can actually determine the uh, the elevation of it as well so just looking here 30 and it's going up in increments of 5 my scale is 1 is 2000 so when I'm be measuring up here in 5 millimeter increments so where 30 is, I'm going to start at 25, right here, and I'm going to go up in 5 millimeter increments. So I'll just do a line up there, like that, and every 5. So it'll be 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So project those lines across. <clears throat> just move this down here a little bit. slipped on the last one there didn't need that anyway okay so I'll just move that back down my visualizer was just getting in the way there slightly so putting those in those measurements so if that was 25 I've got 30 35 40 45 and 50 and 55 was up here but I didn't need that <coughs> so A is on the 30 so I'm going to project that up to the 30 mark is on the 35 and finally C is on the 50 it's going all the way up to the top one so locate those in my elevation so C A and B like I didn't plan you would also connect them up in your elevation view so that is what that stratum of ore for those outcrop points A, B and C would look like in the elevation okay as we're looking down on top of it this is what we see but when we're looking straight at it from the front view that's what we see up here so what we have to do is we have to get the strike so the strike is a level line the strike is a level line that runs across the surface parallel with the horizontal plane so that line there that I've just drawn in where it hits here on AC, I'm going to project that down. And that is actually giving me a point about here. I'm going to connect it across to B. What I've actually found there, okay, is my strike. And we know the strike line is a true length, okay put in TL there for true length because in the elevation view I've done a horizontal line and it is parallel with the principal plane, the horizontal plane, one of the principal planes of reference therefore when I look down top of it that makes it a true length in my plan view. Now to get the dip what we do is we look out along that strike line and we set up an auxiliary view. So I'm going to project it out here. <clears throat> 
set up an x1 y1 I'll actually keep it out here I'll keep it neat and tidy so that's my x1 y1 which is my auxiliary view and I'm going to project out perpendicular to that for all the points so see we go out it's at the highest B and my strike line which will be seen as a point view and then A so, for all of those, I know when we're measuring, okay, do my auxiliary view, go two views back, okay, so if we project from the plan, we take our heights from the elevation, okay, so A is up 5 millimeters, B is up 10, okay, because I can see 5 and 5 is 10, and then C is up 25, okay, so that there is C1, B1, A1, and if I'm accurate, they should all connect up in a straight line. It's actually perfect today. So if I just continue that on there, what I've actually found inside and here in the gap is my dip, which is the angle <coughs> that surface ABC, because this ABC now we see it as an edge view. That is the angle it makes with the horizontal plane, okay? That is the angle it is into the ground. Okay, so now what we're going to do, guys, <coughs> is we're actually going to determine the outcrop points on a stratum of ore, okay? So I'm actually going to put in all of those contour lines that I previously had here. I'm also going to put them in down here. So, starting off with, if you imagine, I said the first height. So we know A is at a height of 30. So this is actually going to be 25 right here. And I'm going to measure up in 5 millimeter increments again. So this one will be 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and go up to 55 here. So if that was 25, this is 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and then obviously 55 will be up here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put in those contour heights. The same thing as we kind of had here. This is how they would appear in this view as well. So we already know where that one is. This is my 35 one, which is going through B. This is the 40 one. 45. 50, possibly 55 as well. Okay, so I'm actually going to extend that stratum out just a little bit to here. I'll extend it out to here. Just see if we might get something. Okay, now what's important to know here is it says here part B, draw the outcrop points of the ore. Okay, so they gave us three outcrop points of where that ore came to the surface. Now essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to draw the other outcrop points of where they would appear on the surface as well, at these various heights. So at the height of 25, we can see it hit it right here. I'm just trying to see, would it actually meet it? So at the height of 25, what I'm going to do is, where I had the edge view of the surface going through there, I met it right here. So what I'm actually going to do is I will project that back to see does it go through the 25 contours. And no, it stays off the page. So in that case, probably would, but you can see it actually goes off the page on the question, so it's not going to count. In relation to the 31, I'll just slip in there, sorry. In relation to where it went through the 30 mark, we already know it went through A here, but it also goes through over here if we follow the contour around. Okay, likewise with B, went through 35, 
can actually see that one already. So I went through this one and this one here. So there was B, followed around. There's another point right there. It's actually on my strike. And I'm going to keep finding the other points now. You can see what we're doing here. So at the height of 35, I can see, or sorry, the height of 40, I can see it goes through right here. So at that point right there, I'm going to project that back to where it cuts through the 40 mark there, follow it around, and there. Okay. This point right here, this is on the 45. Is here and here. Next one is on the 50. Which is here and here. And finally, we had 55, which is gone off the page as well, so it doesn't matter. So, 50 is here, and obviously at C, the 45 one was here and here. The 41 was here and here. Then we had obviously 35 here and here, and then 30. So, what we would do then is nice and easy. Try and do this as best I can. I'll actually use this red mark here. I'll try and make go with the flows. Now I know it's going over here, so what I do is I would go out a little bit to arch it back in. Okay, so there we have it. There is our outcrop area um, completed. Okay, this is the outcrop area. Okay, of the ore. So that's where the ore is kind of contained within that area there. Now, obviously, you can see here. I probably could have maybe extended this down here. I kind of went across. Could have brought that down a little bit lower there. Okay, um, but that's the first question done there, guys. Hope you found it helpful. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to question two at the bottom of the page. So for question two, it says the map shows ground contours at 10 meter vertical intervals. A, B and C are outcrop points on the foot wall of a stratum of ore. D is an outcrop point on the head wall of the ore. So we've got A, B and C this time which are on the foot wall and we have a point D then that's actually on the head wall. So this time we have the foot wall. Now it's also saying, sorry, we're also given the strike OB is given. Okay, so we have the, excuse me, we have the strike line here already. So we don't actually need to get the elevation here. So now it's first asking us to determine the dip and thickness of the ore and then draw the outcrop for the head wall and foot wall. Okay, so this one could get a little bit um, confusing because we'll have a look on a good few lines going here and there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll start off by setting up my auxiliary view so I can get my dip and my thickness. Okay, so we've got our strike line, which is the line OB. So I'm going to look a lot along that. It's like I'm looking out at how would I put it in this direction there, looking along the line, and I'm going to set up an x1, y1 perpendicular to that. That is my auxiliary view. Now what I'm going to do is project out my points A, B and C. C is at, just looking here, 80, B is at 90, and A is 100, so C is my lowest. And going up in increments of 10, so B is at 80, so I'll have to go a little bit higher with that one. And then A is at, I think it's 110. I'll go higher with that one again. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is, where the lowest one is, which is C, okay, I'm going to start my height here, my x and y1, if I think of these as contour heights, I'm going to start that as 60. Okay? So that one there is going to be 60. So what I'm going to do is, to find C, I know I have to measure up a height of 10. Because our scale is 1 is to 1000 and there's 10 meters in our contours. So C is simply up 10 there. Okay? 
Likewise, B is on the 90 contour, actually. Sorry, I thought it was the 80. It's actually the 90 contour. So if this was 60, I'm going to have to measure up 30. So I'll actually have to project out that line a little bit further. And that one. So that one's going up to 30. Then remember 60, which is where I started. 60 to 90, there's 30 in the difference. And then finally, the last one, A is on 110. So 60 to 110, there's 50 in the difference. So I'm going to go 50 there. So I'll mark those. Oh, and there is my mistake. I was looking at that. Apologies for that. C is not at 70. C is actually at 80. So I need to mark up. If that was 60, this would be 80 here. So that looks better now. So there's my... That is a football. So I'm just going to put it down here. So this is C1. Then I had B1 and A1. And if I'm accurate, all of them should connect up in a line. So A should connect all the way to C, and it should go through B, and we can see here, they do. So I'm actually happy with that. Let's put in this a little bit darker. So there's my X and Y1, and my dip angle, if I was to continue down like that, my dip angle is this guy. That's my dip. That angle there. Okay. Now what I have to do is I have to also determine my head wall and that will give me the thickness, okay? Because remember A, B and C are outcrop points on the foot wall they said here. That's the first time we've seen a question like that where it's on the foot wall. We have the outcrop point D which is on the head wall. And we can see D is at a height of 100. Okay. So also going to project out D the same way I did with A, B and C. D is up there somewhere and because I told you the X and Y1 was at the height of 60 okay 60 from 100 okay these is 40 so that's how high I have to measure up there 40 millimeters so that's where D1 is right there and we know the head wall and the foot wall are parallel to one another I'm going to draw those in And the space in between them, just put it in like that. That there is my thickness. I'm just putting in a little T with it. Okay, so I've done the first part. Part A is done where I found the dip and the thickness. Now, what I have to do is part B, draw the outcrop for the head wall and the foot wall. Okay, so we're going to have to put in our contour lines here. So for every 10 millimeters, I'm going to measure up. So that was 10. I have the 20, I put in the 30, the 40, the 50, and 60. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in those contour lines parallel with my X1, Y1. Because that would be parallel with the ground. goes up to 110 and 120 so I'll put it in don't think I'm gonna need this though so as I said previously this one was 60 with 70 80 90 100 and 110 and then I've got a final one here which is 120 okay it's just slightly gone outside the page there okay the parameters of the page so what we're going to do is we want to plot those outcrop points now Okay, so to plot those outcrop points, I'm going to start with the foot wall and then I will do the head wall, which will probably go around it, I'd imagine. I might actually be just thinking the head wall might be inside, it depends. But I'll start with the foot wall, the A, the B, and the C. Okay, so we've already got a point here on the A, which is at 110. 
So if I look at that contour, the 110 contour, and I follow it around, okay, and I see this here, because that'll actually give me two outcrop points where it crosses over. So if I follow the 110 around, I can see it gives me another outcrop point right here. So that's 110. The 120 would actually meet somewhere up here. So it's actually going to be outside, so that's not going to be relevant. So it won't need it there. Next one I have to find is for the 100, for the 100, so 100 and 10 working backwards will give me 100. So at the 100 height, it hits right there. I'm going to project this back. And I'm going to keep this neater now, so I'm just going to line it up with where we see it here, okay, on the foot wall, because remember, I'm going to write that in. So just put in foot here and then head here. So head wall and foot wall. So on my foot wall, where it hits the 100, I'm going to look for the 100 contour, which is this guy here. I can see it there. So follow that 100 contour around and mark it here. And follow it around here. Okay. Likewise with the 90, which is where B is. B is at a height of 90. I've got the 90 here and right here. So that one was actually funny enough where I put my arrow. The point there. Point, 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 point. There's my B. I'm going to do the same for the 80, which is where C is. And it hits there and there. And then what 70 would be, which is out of the page, so it doesn't matter. Right, so I'll sketch that in quickly. Okay. So what we've actually drawn in there is the foot wall kind of outcrop area and what we're going to draw in now is the next one which is the head wall outcrop area. Okay, so same concept and um, what we have to do is we have to find the points on the head wall outcrop area so I'm just looking here, I'm going to see will the 120 go through it if I was just to extend this on here, my head wall, meet there and when I project that back it goes nowhere near the 120 question is does it cut through the 110 and yes it does okay so I want to find the points on the head wall so the head wall points this is where it cuts through the 110 contour right there so keep moving that up until I get there and mark the 110 heights so 110 here and here so there's two points right there Same thing with the 100, which is where D was. So the 100 is right here, and obviously where D is. Okay, then we have the 90, which is right here. You can see my mark here, so I'm just marking the points. So there's 90 and 90 and then finally do we have it on the 80 so I'll just very quickly extend that down there and the 80 is outside the page so that's not relevant so what I'm going to do quickly again is sketch those points in so my 101 is here and here So just very quickly there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a little bit of colour. It's just a little bit of a purple here. So 
So there we have it guys, that there is where we have both the outcrop points for the head wall, okay, and the foot wall. The foot wall was actually the one on the outside and the head wall was the one on the inside, okay. Um, it just basically gives you an idea, basically, basically on the kind of the hilltop here or the mountain or whatever it is, on where that kind of ore would actually be. And we can obviously see it kind of tapered in here because the contour lines were actually quite close over here, okay. Where the contour lines were spaced apart, then obviously that's where the the ore was looks like it's spaced apart as well. Okay, but that doesn't mean that the thickness here isn't the same thing. Okay, just because it just has to do with the topography of the land. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to move on to question three on the right hand side of the page. So for question three, it states the map shows ground contours at ten meter vertical intervals. Okay, our scale is one to two thousand, so we're going to be measuring up in tens. Uh, a, B and C are outcrop, outcrop points of a stratum of ore, where A is on the 40, um, C is on 60, and B is on 20. So B is our lowest, so it goes 20, 40, 60. Uh, determine the strike of the stratum, okay, and then draw the outcrop of the ore. Okay, so part A, draw the strike of the stratum, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the outcrops of that ore. Right, so... What we're going to do is, as always, we're going to project up in elevation to get our points. So I'll actually mark up a vertical height here. And I'm going to measure up in tens. My lowest one is 20, so I'm going to take that as 10, 20, 30, 50, and 60. Okay, so every one of them, check the cross. I always mark in my heights as well. So it's like I started my XY line at the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, finally 60. So where they are in plan, let's find them in elevation. B is on the 20, A is at the 40, and finally C is at the 60. So there we have it, there's our three points. So you just have to locate them. So there's B, there's A, and finally there's C. So A connects to B, which connects to C. So you can see this is quite a, the appearance of it here in our elevation view is quite a skinny little triangle. But same concept, from the elevation, whichever one is in the middle height, which is the A, I'm going to do a level line across. Where that hits, in this case, my BC line, I'm going to project it down. And what I'm actually going to do is connect that to A. So you can see here in this one, our strike is almost going down in a vertical line. Okay, but there's our strike line. Doesn't matter, we followed the correct method. That strike line is therefore a true length. So you can see actually this is quite a good one. You can see it looks quite short up here, but in reality you can see it's actually a long enough line. So what we're going to do now is we have to look along that true length to get uh, what would be our dip. But that will actually help us. The, dip, the reason we need to dip here, even though it didn't ask us, is because without the dip we cannot get the outcrop points. Okay? Because we're going to basically see this surface ABC here as an edge view. Okay? So using our set squares, Okay, I'm just going to move it down here now because we have the elevation part of it done. Okay, that's why we needed the elevation there was to get the strike. And what I'm going to do is look along my strike. So looking, it's like I'm looking straight down there at it like that. Okay, you can see that little arrow I've put in there. And I'm going to go perpendicular to that to set up an X1, Y1. That is my auxiliary view. So check out your points A, B, and C. So start with B, which is the lowest. Then I had A, which was in the middle, and C, which was the highest. Go a little bit higher there. And out along these, I know I'm going to leave my contours because I'm getting outcrop points. 
So 10 was my lowest, so that's my 10. This will be at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Might need 70, I'm not sure. So parallel to my X1, Y1, I'll set up my contours. And their various heights. So I said starting out here, I'm going to put my heights out here. I was treating the x and y1 as at the 10, like I did up here. This would be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I put in 70 for good measure. Okay, so let's locate our point. So B we know was a height of 20. Okay, so where the B was projected out, okay, up here was actually a height of 10. So it's up 10, but it's on the 20 contour. That is B1. A was at the 40, so followed up. There's A1, and then C was at the 60, C1. Now, if I match it, they should all meet up in a line, and they do. That helps us create our edge view, so I'll project that down just a little bit further, and I'll project it up a little bit further. But that is our edge view. of surface ABC. So what I want to do is I want to locate the outcrop points. So where C was at 60, once I project that back I can find two outcrop points on the 60 contour. The other one is right here. I'm very faint there but you can see it. Okay. I want to also find 70. It might be there. We'll just see it's right here. I will go parallel to how we projected the lines it has to move back perpendicular to our auxiliary view x1 y1 so the 70 actually is hitting here so I'll put it in underline the hallway actually <coughs> so where I extended that out a little bit right there when I project it back I can see I get an outcrop point here and here. Okay. I also had one at the 60 and the 60, which is here and here. I'd imagine it's going to 60 again downwards, so I don't have one there. I also have one at the 50. So we'll project these back. So where my stratum of ore is on the 50. That gives me two more outcrop points, which is follow the 50 contour here and here. I also have A at the 40. I have to continue that one on because A is one, but then there's another one if we follow it around. There's another one here. I also have another one at the 30, which is right here. Just about reaching it. Got one here. And then I have another one down here. Just follow the contour. Likewise with B, I have one at 20. There's one there, and there'll be another one here already. And then it's a case of, do I have one at my 10 as well? So I'm just going to extend that out. It slips there again, sorry. So you can see here where the 10 was. <coughs> so I'll also project that back. There's my 10 here and here. So I'll just quickly sketch that in. So 
So there we have it guys, that there is our outcrop area done for the third question, okay? You can see here, even though they give us the three points, uh, three outcrop points on a stratum of ore, we could see by extending on our, our, I suppose in this case, I'll just call it the head wall, they didn't actually specify whether it was the head wall or foot wall, by extending them on though, we could actually determine another outcrop point, which is at the 70, and then by extending it on here, we could determine one that was a bit lower at the 10s as well, okay? Otherwise, at this 61, it would instead of going out here like this, it would, by drawing it, we would have gone down like this, 60. And then where we were at the 20s as well, we would have just gone straight up as well, okay? And we did have ones here at the 10 as well, okay? So hope you found that helpful, guys. That is those three questions done.